Hi, I'm Dr. Jack West, medical oncologist at Swedish Cancer Institute in Seattle and the president and CEO of GRACE, the global resource for advancing cancer education. I'm here with Dr. Suresh Ramalingam, who is the director of the Lung Cancer Program at the Winship Cancer Institute at Emory University in Atlanta and one of the leaders in the field of thoracic oncology. So thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jack. A transcript as well as a PDF file with copies of figures associated with this program are available at www.cancergrace.org forward slash gracecasts. One of the most controversial areas in managing locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer is how to approach patients with stage 3A disease who have known mediastinal involvement on the same side as the cancer but not the other side. At Emory, what kind of strategy do you typically employ for these patients? The first important thing is to make sure you have staged the patient appropriately you have obtained sampling of the nodes by a media sonoscopy or a very reliable clinically correlated PET scan. And once we have somebody with documented 3A disease, the first question we ask is whether it involves one station in terms of nodal location or multiple nodes at multiple levels are involved. And typically when multiple levels are involved or if there is a node that's really big, we consider those patients less likely to be able to derive benefit from surgery and we recommend a combined chemotherapy-radiation approach, and we give both chemotherapy and radiation concurrently. On the other hand, if we have a patient with single level of lymph node involvement in the mediastinum, and patient has an excellent performance status and could potentially undergo a surgical procedure, then we consider them for treatment with chemotherapy for a defined number of cycles, which is usually two to three cycles, and then restage them and take them to the operating room for surgery. And subsequently, depending on the pathology report, which gives us more precise information about nodal involvement, we consider additional radiation after the surgery as a method to prevent local recurrence. So this is clearly one of the most controversial areas, management of 3A disease. And clearly there are variations from one institution to the other, one group to the other, and how they best manage. But our approach has been either combined chemotherapy radiation or chemotherapy followed by radiation, depending on the clinical instance. And very rarely do we use all three modalities, that is concurrent chemotherapy radiation followed by surgery. Would you say that the majority of your 3A patients are suitable for surgery, or that that's really a minority of 3A patients, and that the majority are really better served by a non-surgical approach? The good number of patients that we see are candidates for definitive chemotherapy and radiation, less likely to be candidates for surgery, that again could be a selection bias because of the patients who get referred to us as a referral institution. But we do see a number of patients who have multiple illnesses concurrent with the lung cancer, such as obstructive airway disease, cardiac disease, which also adds to the challenge of taking those patients to the surgical setting. So I would say in my practice, majority of the patients are candidates for chemo radiation and not surgery. What do you now consider to be the optimal standard for patients with unresectable disease, if you know that, going into your treatment plan? So there are two approaches that are more commonly used. One is the cisplatin metoposide with radiation. The advantage with that approach is you're using full doses of chemotherapy with radiation. And that approach has been investigated extensively by cooperative groups and also other groups elsewhere outside the United States. We have used that for young patients who have minimal comorbid illness, have a good functional status. We think that that's a very good regimen. The other regimen that is probably more commonly used in the U.S. is the weekly chemotherapy regimen consisting of carboplatin and paclitaxel with the concurrent radiation. And that approach has some advantages in that it is better tolerated and most patients are able to complete the radiation and chemotherapy without any dose delays. In that approach, after the patients complete the chemo radiation, we give them some additional full-dose chemotherapy in the clinic. So both approaches have been used in our practice. We use them based on what the patient's functional status is and what our disease burden that we are treating is within the patient, etc. In the last couple of years, the results from the Hoosier Oncology Group's trial that tested the value of additional consolidation docetaxel or taxotere after chemo and radiation together has been presented. Can you tell us a bit about that trial and if that has had any impact on how you treat patients with locally advanced disease? Sure. So the Hoosier Oncology Group asked the question whether giving taxotere for three cycles after the patient has received full-dose chemotherapy with radiation, adds to the survival benefit. 
and their trial did not show a tangible benefit for patients who got those three cycles of taxotere. That has really made us rethink the role of consolidation chemotherapy or so-called full-dose chemotherapy in patients who've already received a full-dose chemotherapy regimen with radiation. So as a general rule, we have moved away from giving those three cycles of consolidation chemotherapy in patients who already got full-dose radiation and chemotherapy. However, if you were to use a weekly dose of carboplatin and paclitaxel, the argument can be made that you are giving radiosensitizing doses of the chemotherapy drugs and the patient may be better served with having some full-dose chemotherapy after you have completed the chemoradiation. If you look at the carboplatin paclitaxel weak regimen clinical trials that have been done, they've all used those two dose, two or three cycles of consolidation full-dose chemotherapy. So our personal feeling is that if you use full-dose chemo upfront with radiation, there may be a limited role or no role for another full-dose chemotherapy regimen. If you go with an alternative approach, which is lower dose of chemotherapy with radiation, then perhaps the patient may benefit from having two cycles of full-dose chemotherapy. Do you feel that giving six to eight weeks of any chemotherapy with radiation is enough? I think that in clinical practice, we've seen that a lot of oncologists just don't feel comfortable with stopping and watching a patient after less than two months of systemic therapy. And other people have suggested that we standardly give three to four cycles postoperatively for earlier stage patients, but we are supposed to be content with giving perhaps just two cycles for a bulky stage 3B patient. You bring up a great point. This is what we've always believed, that even in advanced stage disease, we go up to four cycles or six cycles of chemotherapy. Why would it be any different? in a patient with early stage disease. So if you look at the adjuvant setting, which is a patient just got surgery, and if he or she is a candidate for chemotherapy, we give them three or four cycles of chemotherapy. So you got both ends, early stage and the advanced stage, where patients get three or four cycles of chemo. Why should it be any different with locally advanced? The best way to answer a question is to do a trial. And the best evidence we have so far, unfortunately, is that that approach has not helped. Now, this setting is unique because you're not just giving chemotherapy, you're giving radiation with chemotherapy, and that can be difficult for some patients if they experience particular toxicities. So I think what the recent data are suggesting is that there may be a small subgroup of patients, either clinically or molecularly chosen, which we still haven't found how to do it very well, may benefit from those kind of approaches but perhaps the way forward might be to see how we can integrate some of the targeted drugs and enhance the anti-cancer effects of what you're doing while the patient is getting radiation, or perhaps use a targeted agent instead of chemotherapy if you can identify a specific target and a drug that blocks the target in a smart manner. Well, thank you very much for taking the time today. really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I wish the best for all the listeners in the program and the patients and their relatives.